Hello friends, welcome back. Guys, in this video we will talk about Netflix Eureka. Guys, Netflix Eureka server is also known as Service Registry and Discovery Server. Guys, I will explain all about Netflix Eureka server and I will give you a demo as well. Guys, in this video I will clear all your doubts about Netflix Eureka server. Alright guys, so that being said, let's begin the video. Guys, uh, let's have a look what are we going to cover in this video. First of all, we'll create one microservice and we'll make it Eureka server. Alright guys, then we'll create another microservice, we'll call it card service. Guys, so this is going to be our regular service. Alright guys, then we are going to create another microservice and we'll call it payment service. And finally, I will also explain the communication between these two microservices through Eureka server. Alright guys. So you have to watch this video carefully. All right, let's move. All right, guys. Now let's have a quick look at the application that we are going to build in this video. So guys, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have one Eureka server and we are going to have two microservices, card service and payment service. Once we have these microservices, we want each one to go and register itself into the service registry, right? So that's why guys, I have mentioned here Eureka client. So we'll add one dependency called Eureka client dependency. All right, guys. So this dependency will make sure that this particular microservice register itself into the Eureka server registry. All right, guys. And then we'll allow the communication. I want payment service to go and talk to the card service through service registry. So payment microservice will go and talk to the Eureka server to get the IP address and port number of the card service and then use that detail IP address and the port to send a request to card service and then get the response from the card service. All right, guys. I hope you guys are clear with our application architecture. All right, guys. Let's move. Now, guys, first of all, we are going to talk about the Eureka server. Guys, so while creating a microservice, we have to add a dependency called Spring Cloud Starter Netflix Eureka Server. So we have to add this particular dependency to create a Eureka server. And then we have to enable the Eureka server by using annotation called at the rate enable Eureka server. Okay, so this is the second step. Next guys, we have to add some properties into the properties file. So very first one is the port, port number server dot port equals to 8761. So guys, this is the default port on which Eureka server runs. Okay, then the application name, we are simply calling it Eureka server. Then the next property is Eureka dot client dot register with Eureka equals to false. Why false? Because we are building a server, right? We do not want server to go and register itself. Simple. Okay, guys. Next property is Eureka dot client dot fetch dash registry equals to false. Again, this property is also client specific. So the client uses this particular property to fetch the registry information from the server and caches locally. All right, guys. So we have got three steps to do. One is we have to go and make use of Spring Cloud Starter Netflix Eureka Server dependency. We have to make use of annotation called at the rate enable Eureka Server. And we have to add a couple of properties into the properties file. All right, guys. I hope this is clear. All right, guys, now next is try it out. Let's go and create one microservice and make it Eureka server. So guys, I'm going to start the STS Spring Tool Suit. All right, guys, here we are. I'm going to create one Spring Starter project and let's call it Spring Cloud Eureka server. Okay, Eureka server. You guys can give it a better name, but I'm fine with this. Spring Cloud dot com dot okay java dot eureka server description i will simply mention netflix eureka server all right guys i am using java 8 next let's go and add let's go and look for eureka dependency guys you have to choose eureka server not the discovery client okay because we are going to build a Eureka server. So we need Eureka server dependency. So this one is enough for now. Click on next and click on finish. Okay guys. So guys, if you look at the pom.xml file, 
you will see that we have added the Eureka server dependency that you can verify here Spring Cloud Starter Netflix dash Eureka dash server dependency. All right, guys. Next step was to enable annotation call at the rate enable Eureka server. Somehow it is not suggesting. Okay, so we have to add enable Eureka server annotation control save. Next step three is to add some properties in application door properties file. Okay, guys. Port my system is little bit slow equals to 8761 is the default port for Eureka server. All right, guys. Now I will add the application name spring dot application dot name equals to let's call it Eureka server. Okay, guys. Now we have to add few more dependencies Eureka dot client dot register with Eureka equals to false. Why? Because we are building a server. Okay. And we are going to add one more dependency Eureka dot client dot fetch registry equals to false. All right, guys. Give me a moment. Let me add some comment here just in case if you have to take a look later point of time. Save. All right, guys. I hope so far we are good. Let me just go and just update project. Let's go and start our application. Spring Boot app. Let's have a look at the console. So here you can see the port number 8761. And here is the, okay, started, right? Let's go to the browser and let's go verify. How does it look like at the moment? All right, guys. Localhost colon 8761. This is the default port number for Eureka server. All right, guys. So basically our server is up and running. Cool. Now guys, just to give you uh, some updates on these properties. For example, if you go and make it true. True. This particular property where it says register with Eureka equals to true. Let's see the behavior, how our application behaves at the moment. Look at it here. We do not have any application, no instance available at the moment. It means that there is no microservices running and register into this particular Eureka server. All right, guys. Now what I did, I simply enabled this particular property. Eureka dot client dot register with Eureka equals to true. I'm going to stop and restart this application. Let's see the behavior. What exactly happens when we enable this particular property. All right, guys. So guys, this is just to make you understand the behavior of this particular microservice. All right, guys. All right, guys. This is all good. Let's go to the browser. I'm just going to refresh the endpoint. What do you see now, guys? We have got a new entry into the service registry. So guys, when we enable this particular property, register with Eureka equals to true, Eureka server itself register into the service registry. Okay. But this is what we do not want. We never want a server to register itself into the service registry. All right, guys. So we'll go back and we'll make it false. Okay. Save. I'm going to stop this application and I will restart our Eureka server. So I hope you guys are clear with the Eureka server now. All right, guys. Let's go and refresh once. Now, if you see the server entry is removed from the service registry. All right, guys. Let's, let's continue. So guys, we have our Eureka server ready. All right, let's move. Guys, next is we are going to create another microservice. We'll call it cart microservice. All right, guys. Now this time we are going to add a dependency called Spring Cloud Starter Netflix dash Eureka dash client. This particular dependency, if you guys remember, while creating the Eureka server, we have used Netflix dash Eureka dash server dependency but this time for this cart microservice we are going to make use of netflix eureka dash client dependency all right guys and if you look at the annotation here we are going to add at the rate enable eureka client annotation microservice to go and register into the service registry all right guys and we are going to add few properties to application name application port number you can use any random port number and then Eureka dot client dot service URL guys. So this particular property is to point to the Eureka server. If you guys remember our Eureka server is running on default port number, which is 8761 on localhost. 
okay if you guys are using any other port number so you have to make sure that you use the right port number if you guys are following the video as is this will work for you guys as well okay guys i have mentioned a couple of few other properties let's understand those properties first first one is the lease renewal interval in seconds so guys this is the interval past which the client will send the heartbeat to the server lease renewal interval in seconds okay next property is lease expiration duration in seconds so the number of seconds eureka server will wait for the heartbeat from the client otherwise it will remove the client from the registry so guys in production you might see these two properties as well okay but we are not going to use these two properties in this demo all right guys let's move okay it's time to do some coding let's go and create our cart microservice okay so i'm going to start the sts again all right guys let me just go and create new spring starter project and let's call it cart service or cart microservice whatever is easy for you guys com dot ok java dot cart dot service so guys if you look at it here my package and group name is same cart microservice i'm using java 8 click on next guys this time i'm gonna add something called eureka discovery client dependency which you can see here okay next and click on finish all right guys so if i expand all right guys let's look at the pom.xml file of card service so guys here you will notice that we have added spring dash cloud dash starter dash netflix dash eureka dash client dependency okay so guys here we have added netflix eureka client dependency all right guys let's go and make use of the annotation now so at the rate eureka enable eureka client annotation okay what else do we need we have to go and add some properties application dot properties guys first of all let's go and add a spring dot my system is a little bit slow application dot name equals let's call it cart service okay let's go and add port number server dot port equals to let's say 8080 okay you can use any port number doesn't matter now next property is very important i have changed the port number to 8008 just to be in sync with the slides and this is the next property so basically as i have explained already this particular service url is pointing to the netflix eureka server okay guys and i am going to mention the other two properties which i am not using but if you want you can give it a try okay all right guys you can try these two properties lease renewal interval in seconds and lease expiration duration in seconds okay guys let's go and create a controller now for our card service i am going to create a new class let's go and create a package as well controller let's call it card rest controller t r o w l e r okay guys i'll make it very simple controller rest controller okay guys so what i did i have missed one dependency let's go to spring dot add starters and let's go and add spring web dependency click on next and click on finish okay let me just go and download the dependencies maven update okay so let's go and import rest controller now this is cool okay let me just add request mapping here mapping on say cart okay let me just go and make sure we have added the recovery dependency cart service i am going to create a very simple function here public let's say string value and let's call it get data so this is my function and what i want to return is return a very simple string for our demo so basically data service all right guys now what i will do let me start our application and let's see the behavior so run as spring boot app guys first of all we'll see the magic of at the rate enable eureka client annotation how this annotation works okay so our application here also you can see that this application has registered into the 
service registry as card service running on port number 8080 okay let's go to the eureka server endpoint let's go and refresh all right guys what do you see we have got one service added into the service registry it's called card service and running on port number 8008 all right guys now if i just go and hit this endpoint right localhost colon 8008 slash cart slash data cart slash data so what do you see here cart service data from cart microservice right so our microservice is working perfectly fine all right guys all right guys let's move now guys next is we are going to build another microservice and we'll call it payment service okay we'll do the same thing only we'll go and add spring cloud starter netflix eureka client dependency we'll go and make use of at the rate enable eureka client annotation and we'll add couple of properties all right guys so the very important is the application name port number and service url which is pointing to the eureka server all right guys so let's go back to the sts and create one more microservice okay here we are let's go and create new spring boot starter project and this time we'll call it payment service okay i'm using java 8 and payment dot service let's call it payment microservice let's go and add spring web and eureka client dependency eureka discovery client okay click on finish so guys just to say over time what i will do i'll copy the properties from let's go to the payment service here we are let's go to the application properties and add these properties so first of all i will simply go and rename the service name let's call it payment service and the port number is going to be i forgot what i mentioned in the slide but this port number can be anything and this is the url pointing to the eureka server all right guys now let's go to our here let's go and create rest controller guys dot controller and let's call it payment rest controller okay click on finish now before that let's go to the your main class and here we are going to add at the rate enable eureka client dependency okay cli ent okay save let's go back to the rest controller and add at the rate rest controller annotation okay let's go and add request mapping as well request mapping and then value i'll pass is say payment okay i'm going to add one function public string get data okay and return so i'll come back to this return in a moment but for now let's go and add payment service okay let's go and add get mapping on slash data only all right so payment service okay guys let's do one thing let's go and start this our microservice and let's see the behavior how it behaves at the moment okay for that maven update okay so let's go and run as a spring boot application okay our application has started let's go to the browser let's go and refresh eureka server first so guys what do you see now we have got one more microservice registered into the service registry okay it's payment service running on port number 9009 all right guys now let's see what is the exact status of our application or microservice basically localhost colon 9009 slash payment and then slash data so guys what do you see now payment service so this is the value is coming from our payment rest controller function so far we are good all right guys so we have our payment service ready let's move guys next thing is microservice communication we want payment service to get the data from card microservice but we are not going to directly call the card microservice we'll go and talk to the eureka server first get the server ip address url of the card microservice and then make a get call all right guys so how are we going to going to do that first of all we'll go and make use of load balancer client so this is the spring cloud load balancer 
client side load balancer so in case we have multiple instances of one microservice it is very important to use the load balancer so load balancer will route the traffic to the less heavily instance okay then guys we'll make use of the service instance so service instance this basically represents an instance of a service in a discovery service so this is how we are going to use service instance equals to load balancer client dot choose the function and here we pass the microservice name so we want to call cart microservice okay and then from here we are simply using the rest template to make a call to the microservice guys okay guys we'll talk about fin as well netflix fin or open fin in the next video but for now we'll go and simply use the rest template to call our microservice all right guys okay yeah it's time to code let's go back to our microservice and let's do the communication all right guys let's go back to the sts now guys for the communication i'm going to create one more class and let's call it in a new, pack new package where i'm going to put in communication and let's call it i want payment card communication you guys can give it a better name i am very poor in naming convention okay but anyways i am going to create this particular class called payment and card service communication okay i'll give it the reason why component okay guys now here i am going to create a new function public let's go and use a string get cart info okay get cart info is my function and for this one guys i'll come back to the return in a moment we'll go and make use of load balancer client okay load balancer client okay i will auto wire now guys we'll use load balancer client to get the service instant by using service id okay so service instance equals to first let's go and import what it says import service instance okay now i will be using load balancer client dot there is function called choose okay and guys here i will pass the service id so service id is the name of the microservice okay so guys if you remember our microservice is cart service okay so we are going to call this particular cart service all right guys i hope this is clear okay now let's prepare the endpoint of this microservice so how can we do that a string uri equals to service instance dot get uri plus the endpoint that we are going to call cart and data okay now guys from here we'll use the regular way of doing thing we'll make use of the rest template class sorry control that rest template class to allow the communication okay so what we'll do rest template say template equals to new for rest template okay guys now next thing is a string let's call it response equals to rest template dot get for say object i'll pass the url and response type is string dot class and now here i will return the response which is going to be a string value all right guys you are hello right now guys i need this particular class let's go to the payment trust controller here what i want to do is private communication so i'll just see oh double m u communication let me just auto wire this particular dependency now guys you know the reason why i've used at the rate component annotation here this one you got it now right because i have to auto wire i have to index the dependency now here what i can do is payment service from payment service and i want to get dot get cart info okay this is cool now what i will do guys i have to stop our payment service first payment service and let's go and restart our payment microservice spring boot app all right guys let's go back to the browser so let's 
go and try our payment service what do you see from payment service and here you see the data from the card service if you remember if i run our card service this is the response from card service right card service data from card micro service and this is what i'm getting from payment service we have called the card micro service so this is the string that coming from the card micro service now if i go to the eureka server and let me just refresh is it what do you see we have got two instances running here card service and payment service guys so this communication is happening through the eureka server okay let me explain the code one more time quickly this is our payment rest controller class if i go inside we have used another class called payment card communication class right so here we have used a load balancer then we are using this particular load balancer to call the card microservice by using service instance id or the application name okay then here we are building the endpoint so the service instance will give me the the uri and then from there we have added the slash card slash data right and then the next communication is very simple through the rest template guys we can also use the open pin or the fin client so we'll talk about open open pin and pin client in the next video all right guys all right guys so in this video we have discussed all about netflix eureka we have built one eureka server and two microservices we have also seen the communication between these two through netflix eureka server all right guys in case of any doubt please let me know in the comment section thank you for watching and please do subscribe and share this video with your friends as well thank you guys